Meanwhile, President Trump is threatening to shut down the government if the next budget does not include money for the long-promised border wall. And, of course, that will happen in September, the next deadline. Watch as Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin responds to the president's threat in my exclusive interview with him last night. If he says it, I would be very prepared that he's going to do that. That's two months before the midterm elections. You're going to let the government shut down right before the midterm elections? I think the president is, is very committed to get the things that he campaigned on and what he's focused on, and I leave it to him to decide. Joining me right now is the chairman and CEO of AECOM, Mike Burke. Mike, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Brian. So you are the head of one of the world's largest engineering firms. You want to talk about what this could look like? Is it doable? Should the White House look into private funding to build the wall? How is he going to get the money to actually execute this? Well, first of all, we're not involved in building the wall, but uh, this is just one part of the incredible shortfall that we have in infrastructure across the United States. We have a $3 trillion uh, shortfall in infrastructure. The wall is just one very small piece of it. And I'd like for the president and Congress to get much more focused on the broader challenge that we have. The infrastructure of this country is crumbling. It's going to be an inhibitor to the continued growth of our economy if we don't fix it fast. So that's what I'd like to get the president and our Congress focused on much more quickly. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. And I want to talk to you about the crumbled infrastructure. But let me let me just close this loop here. Do you think this is a, a difficult project? I mean, you've seen tons yeah. of projects in terms of walls and infrastructure. How would you characterize what he's trying to do at the border? This is a, a very, very easy it's tactical easy. project. It's just a wall. Um, it, it, it could be done very quickly if the funding was there. Yeah. And, and, and does $25 billion, which he's asked for, sound like the number? At least that much. At least that much. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about fixing America's crumbling infrastructure. Uh, why has it become so depleted, first of all? Well, first of all, we have been spending about 2.5% of our GDP on infrastructure for the past 40 years. Uh, countries in, in Europe are spending 5% of their GDP on infrastructure. Some countries spending as much as 9%. So we have underinvested in infrastructure for decades now. And uh, now we finally need to turn our attention to closing that gap. You would think that the president, being a builder himself and a real estate magnet, that this is something he could actually do well uh, and lead this effort. Here's President Trump vowing to rebuild the nation. Listen to this. Our infrastructure will again be the best in the world. We used to have the greatest infrastructure anywhere in the world. And today we're like a third world country. Infrastructure is something that I think we'll have bipartisan support on. I'm asking both parties to come together to give us safe, fast, reliable, and modern infrastructure that our economy needs and our people deserve. And since that speech, the president has rolled out his plan generating one and a half trillion dollars in infrastructure investment. Uh, now the White House is waiting until after the midterm elections to start rebuilding. Mike, what's your take here? Instead of waiting for a federal program, a AECOM is acting now and announcing a new partnership with the Milken Institute. Yes. Uh, first of all, we're, we're not waiting for Congress uh, to get something done. Uh, we're moving, moving at the state and local level, as well as we're here at the Milken Conference today announcing our partnership with the Milken Institute to undertake financial innovation labs in four cities around the world, in Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, and London, to work with the private sector to help close that gap. There's no question there are large pools of private capital. Last year alone, there was an additional $34 billion raised by private equity funds to invest in infrastructure. So the private capital is there, the states are taking action, and we think we can close a significant amount of this gap with the state and local level as well as the private sector. Well, out of the one and a half trillion dollar number that the president had put on it, he said it's only $200 billion from federal money. So it is expected to be a lot of private money. But you are going to have to partner with government because you're talking about permitting, you're mm -hmm. talking about, you know, the whole uh, red tape process, mm -hmm. right? Has it gotten better, by the way, with this rollback in regulation? Well, first of all, it has. In August of last year, the administration significantly rolled back the re regulatory burdens in the infrastructure sector. There's still more to come. They've made commitments. They're going to continue to reduce that 10-year cycle of infrastructure permitting down to two years. And so I think that that is well underway, and we have great confidence that's going to happen. But you, know, you mentioned the activity at the state and local level. That is where it needs to happen. Today, in this country, 
country, 77 percent of all infrastructure monies are spent by state and local governmental entities. And we're seeing it here in Los Angeles at LAX airport. You probably flew into the airport here. Uh, that airport has an $8 billion program of modernization underway. Three billion of it is being done with public-private partnerships. Well, JFK, LaGuardia, mm -hmm. I mean, in New York, it is true that it's amazing how horrible they are compared to I don't know, Singapore mm -hmm. or Dubai. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is pretty extraordinary, yeah, isn't it? Our, our airports are embarrassing yeah. uh, compared to uh, the, 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 the great global airports. So tell us your priorities in addition to what you're announcing today. Mm -hmm. You're also partnering with Mass Equities mm -hmm. on a $200 million project there in, in Denver's River North Art District. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that one. So we are, are partnered. We started bringing our own capital to, to, to our, our clients. Uh, we formed AECOM Capital about four years ago. So we are now investing alongside of our, our clients. So we can bring the entire solution. We could design, build, finance, and operate these infrastructure assets. And so we want to be the facilitator of not just the engineering and the construction services, but also the capital and the long-term operations and maintenance of that facility. What are the, what are the typical uh, time frames for a return? You know, oftentimes you want to get private money to invest in something, but given the regulatory environment and you're not going to see a return for 13 years or 20 years, who wants to invest in that? Has, has the returns timetable gotten better? Well, no, the, the returns on infrastructure assets are clearly, you're exactly right, they're long-term assets. Right. But there are many long-term liabilities with pension funds around the world that have, have significant long-term liabilities to fund for the, their, their, their pension retirees. Uh, so it, it perfectly matches up that long-term liability with these long-term assets. So you're getting a good reception from investors when you talk about some of the priorities? We are. And, and as I mentioned earlier, this $34 billion was raised last year for private equity funds that want to invest in these long dated infrastructure assets. Ah, that's terrific. It sounds yeah. like it would be a good investment. It, absolutely. And have you seen that? I mean, is there history shows that infrastructure type investments do yield good returns? Yes, we've seen uh, right now there's about 200 projects, P3 projects, here in the United States that are currently in the permitting phase. Compare, that's 10 times what it was 10 years ago. Uh, these projects are be being done very efficiently. They're, they're producing the asset at 25% less capital expenditure than the traditional procurement model. So uh, we expect uh, significant long-term uh, appreciation on these assets. All right, great. Thanks so much for walking us through it, Mike. Great. Thank Good you, to Maria. see you. Mike Burke is the chairman and CEO of AECOM.